Leslie. Thank you so much, Felicia. Welcome, everybody. I hope everyone is having a fabulous day. Um, I'm still having a hangover from our extra day from daylight savings. So having an extra hour um, is great. That's my, my hour hangover. <laughs> um, so super excited to participate in the card class with Michaels. We have a fantastic a uh, card to present with you from Cricut. It is in Cricut Design Space. Um, this is what the front of your card will look like. And this is what your back will look like. And when you open it, boy, is it a pop-up. It is a snowflake design. And my lighting is a little bit difficult to see it, but it's a snowflake design that not only is a card, but this um, will pull out from the circle here and become an ornament. Let me just pull that out so you guys can see. So you just can slide that right out. And now you have an ornament to hang um, on a tree, in a window, anywhere that you want to. So very excited to work on this card. Now, I have to say, I am, I consider myself to be a very experienced crafter and a very experienced um, crafter with Cricut and with just general crafting. This was a challenge. I think I've got it down so I can take us through it step by step by step. But if you've approached this card and been like, oh, I don't think I can do that, you can do it. It is a challenge. So be patient with yourself. Um, give yourself the opportunity just to sit back and watch if you want to. Um, this class is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and view the class at any time and do it as a step-by-step -step along with me where you can stop, do the step, start it, and, and move along that way. Um, so if you have any questions, we do have Lindsay and Anita helping me out with chat today. So if you have any questions, um, pop it in there if be specific um if something's you know you don't understand a step or you got stuck on a step please be specific with that because that really does help us help you um okay so let's get started i'm so excited um first let's go into design space first and then we'll go over the um, materials we have to make this project so without further ado i'm going to pop us share my screen and pop us into Cricut Design Space here. I think this is the right one. Okay, so I am on a blank canvas. Now I can just go up to my header bar and those three hashtags, click on the home screen and head right to the Cricut home screen. Now I noticed something funny. I had a moment of panic this morning. I was using my joy earlier and I was trying to pull up this card and I could not find the card. So you can make the card with an explore or a maker. If you're on a joy, just make sure you have your machine set to the explore or maker machine. Um, because otherwise I couldn't, I couldn't find the card because you can't make it on those machine on the joy machine. So as you scroll down, um, I'm going to come back up to the top here in design space. As you scroll down in design space through the different levels of your projects, the videos, projects for beginners, the mugs. Um, you come down here to the creative cards projects. And if you come across, you'll see the snowflake pop-up card. This is the card we'll be creating today. So if you click on this card, you'll see that you have, um, the instructions are in the project. So as you scroll down, you'll notice it gives you the finished size, a description and materials, and then the instructions. You can actually even print out the instructions so you could have it um, right next to you at any point in time. And it does come complete with images that you can click, like hover over and they enlarge so you get to see them a little bit bigger. Now, I have to warn you, my instructions take us a little bit out of order, but it made more sense to me um, to create the project this way. So follow along and we'll see. So either way, either the way I do it or just doing step-by-step -step following these directions, you will come out with a fantastic card. So the first step is to find the project and I'm just gonna go back and I'll click out of that and show you where I found the project. I came to the Cricut homepage or the projects page 
And I scrolled down to where the cards were and I selected the snowflake pop-up card. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to um, go ahead and customize it. And what that will do is it will bring it and put it on my canvas. Now I could also have just clicked make it and it sends it automatically to my machine and I don't even get to come to my canvas and see it. Now, if you are on a tablet device, your home screen is going to look a little bit different. So you do want to go to the project section and you'll look in, um, just do a search for pop-up snowflake and that should pull it up for you. So if you're in all categories, there's our first project right there, the snowflake pop-up card. Okie doke. So now I need to go back to my canvas. Go back to my canvas right there. Okay. So this is, so now I'm back on my canvas and I have all the different pieces and the parts that I need to cut out. So when you're ready to cut out, you set, simply click the make it icon in the upper right corner. And that takes you to the prepare screen. We don't need to change any of the sizes of anything or the shapes of anything. We're literally just going to make this as is. So you could skip the canvas, the customized step and go straight to make it and it brings you into your prepare screen. Now I wanna point out that in the prepare screen, it calls for four different cut, cut steps. So the first cut step will cut out your envelope and the little feeder, the little foot parts of the card. The second will cut out the inserts and the larger tree snowflake, I called them. The fourth one will cut out the leaf snowflakes, and you'll see why, and the circle for the insert, as well as the fourth one is the darker color. It is the back of your card and another fancy inset piece. So we'll start off with the first cut and go ahead and cut that and say continue, which will take it to your cutting screen. Now, when you're in this screen, I'm going to show you a trick. We're, we're going to set this up. Normally, you would just cut maybe medium cardstock and you'd be ready to go and cut it. So I am using Cricut cardstock today, which is an 80 pound cardstock. However, the intricacy of these cuts, I want to use what's called an intricate cut. To find the intricate cut, I go to browse all materials. So no matter if you're on an Explorer, um, like if you're on an Explorer 2 with the dial, go ahead and set your base material in your software, in your design space software. And we're going to do a search up here and type in um, intricate. And this will find the cardstock for intricate cuts. So we want to select this type of cut for um, our card today. Now, the reason we're doing that again is it's very detailed cuts. And what the intricate, does, intricate cut does is it will cut twice, but cuts a little bit lighter on the pressure. So it doesn't, it, it will reduce any tearing you might experience. So I'm also going to select remember material setting. And what that will do, normally you would have to select what material you're using on each one of these cuts. But since I'm using the same material all throughout, I'd like to just be able to move to the next step without having to reselect my material. So I'm going to go ahead and click remember material settings. Then the second step, it tells me to load in my scoring stylus in clamp A, my fine point blade in clamp B, and then I'll be ready to go. Now I am using the Explore Air 3, so I'll be using the stylus um, scoring, scoring stylus in my clamp A, and I'll show you that when we go to the overhead. If you're using a maker, you can use your scoring wheel for this step. And now I see my light is flashing and it's ready to go. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna go ahead and stop sharing here and I'll switch my camera to my overhead view where you'll see all my materials. So let me just switch that around real quick. Okay. All right, so here I have some of my materials laid out that I'm gonna be starting with. First of all, we just need some cardstock. 
So I'll be using Cricut cardstock. Comes in package, packets like this. And it's 12 by 12, 80 pound cover cardstock. I'm actually going to be using blue cardstock today, but that you can see what that looks like. And Michael's have a lot, you've probably been in, seen their whole card aisle. So you've got lots of choices there. I'll also be using the Tombow Mono Adhesive. Um, I have my weeding tool out just in case I need that. I have liquid uh, Tombow glue there, as well as my brayer, scissors, and my scraper. Now, the first step was the envelope and the stand. Now, I have put some of my cardstock on my mat already to um, help me as I go along. I labeled it. <laughs> so if you stack, if you use multiple mats, you can stack them up and just feed them into your machine as you go. Now, I am using the light grip mat. I do prefer this mat because when I'm working with cardstock because it releases the cardstock off of the mat easier than if I were using, say, the standard mat. It's a lighter grip mat, so it doesn't hold it on so, so tight. Um, in clamp A, I've already put in my stylus tool here, and you can see it just tells me to put it with this tip down into clamp A. So I slide that right into clamp A and it, it'll click in for me. And then I have my fine point um, knife in clamp B. So my light is flashing and it's telling me to load in my mat. So I'll go ahead and load my mat in. And it just takes it right in for me. And then it will start cutting. Now, first, what it will do is it will do the stylus and the scoring. So this is the envelope. So it's going to cut out the scoring portions of the, I mean, it's going to score my fold lines on my card. And then it's also going to cut out my little, my the feet for my stands. So this would be the same process, whether you're doing, um, whether you're doing the, um, Maker or the Explorer. I was going super fast. Okay, so now it just did the scoring. Now it's going to do the cutting for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my machine feeding the, the material, the paper through, but I have pre-cut this for us. So I'm going to actually push my machine. Well, I'll wait till this, this first page cuts and then I'll push my machine back to give us a little bit more working room here. So you can see it's cut, it's cutting that right out and it's doing the um, intricate cut. So it's cutting it for its second time here. All right. Now, bring this over. When, we, when you cut your pieces out, your, the pieces we cut out are going to be much more intricate than the pieces you see on my table. So this is what a cut piece will look like. And you can see it's much more involved than what I have on my table here. What I have on my table is to show you an example of how we're going to put this together. Okay, so I'm going to un unmove, um, unload my cutting mat and I turn my cutting mat upside down when I remove my cardstock from my mat. And I really curl it back and I bring my um, cardstock off my mat like this. Now, if this were if a more intricate design, I would double check my cutting mat, make sure I didn't have any debris on my cutting mat or anything like that from my cut, like any little scragglers of paper or anything like that on there. And then I just pop out my stand pieces and my envelope. And as you're waiting, for, as you're working on your other cuts, you can go ahead and um, assemble your envelope. I lost that little guy. Now, sometimes if you lose a little piece like this on your mat, it, you might have a tendency to wanna dig your finger in there and pop it up. But even for a little piece like that, I'd go ahead and turn your mat over and just gently take that off. The name of the game with this, um, with our project today is gentleness. So you do wanna be gentle with it. Okay, and now my second piece of cardstock is ready to go. I'm gonna hide this under here. This is going to do 
the insert for the tree and this, and I'm sorry, the insert for the snowflake and the taller standing pieces of the snowflake. So I have all my settings are all set on design space. So without having to do anything with the software, it, it already goes to the next prepare screen and I just have to load it and then begin cutting it. Okay, load it and cut it. Now, as that's working, I'm gonna set my envelope to the side. And I'm also going to, hold on one second, everybody. I'm just gonna move this back a little bit. Okay. Still reach it, but it just gives me a little bit more working room. So what I wanna show you as, as these pieces are cutting out is are my finished pieces I've already cut out. Now in design space, I removed, I used contour and removed out all the little pieces of this design because I wanted to make sure you could see the pieces of the card that need to fold together, that need to come together and how they're gonna to come together. So we'll start off with our base tree like this piece here. It has the feet on it and there's two of them. On one of them, let's see if I put it here, if this shows it better. You, I want you to notice the difference in these lines here because this will make it so much easier when we have to bring it all together. One has two short lines coming down and an opposite line going up. The other one has three short lines coming down with no opposite line going up. And that is true with our snowflakes here. So we have three lines going up and we have three lines going, two lines coming down and one line going up. So you see the difference in these two snowflakes here. And you actually will cut out four snowflakes like, like that, two of each style. So you'll have two with the three lines coming down and two with the two lines coming with one going up. And so right now, just tuck that information aside in your, in your brain and it, it will be relevant as, as you, as you um, begin to build your design. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take our, you'll take your, um, snowflakes that have the feet on them and we will assemble these together by putting the one with the three short pieces here inside the one with the long piece and if you're cutting along with me just let it cut and just watch this and then we're actually going to assemble one with the cut pieces so this is just to make it easier for the visual so see i've add, i've combined those two pieces together like that I've taken the one with the long into the center of the one with the three. And that just lines in like that, okay? So now we have it at a cross. Now on each side of the snowflake hanging down, you have a short one on the top. And so what we need to do, what we're gonna be doing is basically creating little squares on the inside. But to do this, what we need to do is we will take our two of our smaller snowflakes that have two short lines with the opposite short line here and these will put in first and it doesn't matter which side you put them in just so long as they're opposite each other so we'll put those in opposite each other and now what you'll have see how we have like three layers here one two three each layer has two short lines, two short cut lines coming up. So this cut line here is repeated on each layer. And that's where these last pieces of the snowflake come into play, right here and right here. These pieces we will put on each side here where the three are. And I, there's no really simple way to do it. You just kind of have to slowly eyeball it and carry it down so that it fits into the cut lines like so. So that will, so see now we've created a little box in there and these 
are like this. This is how it looks. And then we're just going to do the same thing with this last piece to fill out the other side. Again, it's the three short pieces will be the last one we put on and you put it on like this. Now I have to say that um, having adding all the intricate, intricate cuts into the design, it certainly does um, make it a little bit more challenging to find your slits and get to get them to slide in as easily as that did. But this is the look from the top. Once you have all the pieces together, this is what it will look like. And then we'll go convert again. This is the bottom of that design, okay? And they, they do slip out. Like that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that one more time because this really was, while, while we're still cutting along, this was the part for me that um, I needed to make the most sense of, if you will. Okay, so let's just, let me just repeat. <laughs> you have one with the three lines coming down and you have one with two lines coming down and one line going up. So when you have a line, that opposite line, think of putting it down um, into the other design. So that's gonna go create our first kind of snowflake tree like that. And it puts it down like that. Then we're going to take, the second step is to take this one, again, with that tree coming, that one line coming up. And we're gonna put that opposite each other onto the tree like this. Okay, I keep calling it a tree. It looks kind of like a tree to me. And then we'll take this last piece with the three lines and line those up onto each side and slide that into place. That one slides down there. And then we take this one and this one slides down here. And you'll know you have the wrong piece if it sits up off your card and it doesn't, it doesn't quite slide down into place for you like that. And then the last steps, we'll put the base on and, and carry it away into our design. Now, when we actually start building it, which I have the pieces already cut out and through the magic of TV, I'm gonna keep cutting my pieces. So if you're cutting along with me, keep cutting with me. Jill says, this one looks too scary. Jill, you can do this. We can all do this one. So I have my pieces, or my intricate pieces here are already cut out. Now, sometimes um, some of your pieces just don't come all the way out after you've cut it. So all you need to do is, um, I use my weeding tool and I just pop those out. Um, and just pull them out on the other side, like so. So they just come out kind of like that. So you do need to do this with your pieces. If any of your little snowflakes didn't come off, you wanna just give those a little pop and pull those off. And you don't have to, like over time, these would, these would just work their way out. Um, but I do like to have it nice and clean as I start my design. Okay, so we're popping these out. And our machine is working. So if you set yours to that intricate cut, it will take a little bit longer than without the intricate cut. So don't, you know, don't panic that it's taking too long to cut. Just let it keep cutting out and it will, it will work. It'll do the magic for you. Because if you were cutting this by hand, I can't even imagine. <laughs> all right, so there's all those little pieces are tucked out and removed. So we have a couple pieces here to talk about. I have my tree part with the legs. I have two pieces that have the three lines coming down. And it's, it's might be a little bit difficult to see. I wonder if I put, put it on this there. If you put it on here, you can see it a little bit better. 
So I have those uh, with the three lines coming down and then I'll have to switch out my paper so you guys can see. Okay. So we have this one, this one, the three with the lines coming down, two with, um, let's see, see, I messed it up. You really have to look at it. Two lines coming down, one line going up, two lines coming down, one line going up, and my two trees here. Now, what I found when I did this was I sort of worked a little bit in reverse. And what that means is I worked on my base first and then added these snowflakes. Now, the directions tell you to build your tree, I keep up, not the tree, build your snowflake, build this up, and then add your base to it. For demonstration, I'm gonna do it in the reverse. I'm actually going to build my base and then add my trees to that, add my snowflakes to that. So we're gonna set these aside for right now. I'm gonna work with just these two pieces here and we're gonna work with our base pieces here. So our base pieces are these L that cut out with your envelope and the little H that cut out with your envelope. So these three pieces cut out with the envelope here. So the first thing we're gonna do, step one, is to insert this long piece into the short piece of the top. And that creates your first layer right there. Now, we're gonna use this little piece here. Um, this is a uh, brace, if you will, for lack of, I don't know, I don't know a better word to call it, but it's like a little brace that is designed to go between the pieces here and fold over and hold these into place. So it's the stabilizer brace, something like that, whatever word you, whatever word you're comfortable with. So um, I'm just going to use my glue here, my liquid glue, and put a little dot of glue on on the first side there and turn this over like this, holding the pieces together. And we will put this base piece onto the first side here and then fold it over. Now I will tell you, you do not have to have this piece. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually use this piece on there. Um, so if you want to skip this step, you can absolutely skip this step, but it's, it's there. So we might as well use it. Okay. So let me get this back here. So then once you've got one, you know, one little set of dots there, put another little set of dots there and just fold those over and hold the base like that. So now that's supposed to give a little stability to your base piece there. Um, if you have little clamps, sometimes I like to put, if I'm using a liquid adhesive, I like to put a little clamp on it and that helps hold it into place. So we'll let that dry for just a second and trade out our cardstock here with the next piece. So in the next one, we're doing the number three cut and this is four little snowflakes in the corner. Now, if your paper has a texture to it, I do like to cut with the texture side down and I'm just pretty consistent with that and always cut with my texture side down. All right, now these pieces here are our base piece. And the way that these are gonna go on, we're gonna fold them in half like this. And these little end pieces here are going to form tabs that will go into the circle which I know that that doesn't make sense to you yet, but it will. So we're gonna fold them in half like this. And these are going to go onto the base of your design here and then connect in with each other. So when we put this on, we go like this. When we put this together, hold your tree upside down and the Pieces with the two pieces going up, it'll have two pieces kind of going up, one down and one up. All we need to do is attach those to these notches here going into, um, the notches are going down. So we just wanna put this onto those notches. So we put one notch there, 
come over and do the second notch here. So that's pretty, pretty easy. Makes a nice little square there for you to hold. Then we're gonna put the other one on. Now the other one will go on the same way, except we have two little notches to take care of and make sure that we sort of clip in into those notches. So this one's up and we're gonna put this one with the, with the one feet facing down into that and into this. And it might take you a few tries just to, to do it before you, before you understand it, I guess, if that's the right word. But once you get it once, you'll be like, oh, okay, I see how that, how that all came together. Now, these last two, you just want to walk them on top of each other like that. So your base of your snowflake should look like this. We've got a nice little square with boxes underneath it. Then to give it stability, we're going to take this round piece, which if you're cutting along with me, you haven't cut this piece out yet. So be patient. Um, oh, sorry, wrong piece. This piece here. We're going to take this piece and we'll put, give it a good fold along the score line. It'll give a score line for you. And then we're going to put the tabs these little tabs here, the parts that's sticking up, we're going to put that tab into the slot like this. So let me show you how that works. If you close your um, snowflake a bit, you'll see that those, that those line up, those tabs line up next to each other. When you have it open, they create a 90 degree angle. So what we need to do is have, it, have them together like next to each other lined up like this. And then you just bend them out this way. Now, if you did this when they're at 90 degree angles, they fold onto each other and that's not, not helpful. So once when they're flat next to each other, they line up like that. And then you take your, um, your card here and you just slip them into the slot. So there's a very thin slot there and you slip those into the slot like this. So those go into that slot there. On the back side, see how those come up like little teeth, your front teeth come up there. So you've got you've got your you've got those tabs and you want to line them up so they're lined up next to each other. So you kind of bring this in a little bit, fold them over like this, and then work this in to the slot like this. And when you flip it over, you'll see it on the other side. Now you can use your um, liquid glue and just put like two little dots here. Don't do a lot. Just two little dots on that side to hold it in place. Or you can use um, just your mono adhesive glue. And then we'll do the same thing and bring these tabs through. Give us another set of teeth here. Like so. Now, the reason I do, the, do it this way, that I do, this is backwards from the directions on the website, I mean, on the, in design space. So the reason that I do it this way is if I were flipping my snowflake upside down, my um, pieces would fall out. So this way I can flip this upside down without worrying about any pieces falling out or having to hold on to everything at once. So just check on the top side that it's, um, it's lined up evenly there. And then on the bottom side, we'll just put some adhesive on the bottom there, a little dot, one dot there, give it a nice closure. And the other dot will go over here and we'll close that up. Like that. Okay, and again, if it's not, like mine's not quite all the way through. I'm just gonna go from the bottom and give it a, like a little tug and a hold. So it goes through. Now you can see already as my, as, as my card will fold, this is going to fold like this and it will fold in and create the card. Okay, so we can set this aside for a minute and let this dry. And I'm gonna remove my, um, I'm gonna remove my, cut pieces here 
from my background and from my paper and show you how carefully when you're working with something intricate, you really need to be careful how you remove it. So what I like to do is I'll use my wedge and get up under and make sure like all the parts that need to stay together, stay together. So I just push them off like this and make sure nothing tears. If you were to tear a piece as you're, as you're making, don't worry, you can go back and just cut that one piece out again if you needed to. So as we're working on this, take removing it from the background here and peeling that off. Now you'll notice I probably have a lot of little pieces left on there that I need to get off. And the way that I do that is I use my wedge here and I just scrape those little scribbles off of there. And I don't press hard, just enough to get underneath and grab those little pieces of paper. The reason that that's important is if I left these little scraps on my mat and then tried to cut another, um, cut another piece on top of that, what would happen is those little pieces would trip up my blade and they might cause my, um, my, my blade not to cut as smooth as I was hoping they would cut. Um, or I expected it to cut. So you do want to make sure that you're you're using a nice fresh mat when you're working with an intricate design like this, that you put your paper down nice and smoothly. And this brayer really does, I'm I never would have thought I'd say this, but it really does make a difference to hold that paper in place so that when I am um, when the machine's cutting, it gets a nice smooth cut. So that's how you want to prepare your mats if you're not already doing that. Okay, so we tuck that under there for when we're ready for it. So now, again, I've already got my next pieces were cut out. So we're ready to go with those. So don't, with this part here, this is the part the machine is cutting right now. These little snowflakes, you have two with the three sides down and two with, um, Two go, two go up and one comes down. So what we want to do first is put the one with the single side on our snowflake first. So to do that, all you have to do, and this is where um, like it's, it's just much more stable with it on the base already than if I hadn't put it on the base. Like I don't have to, I don't need a third hand. The base sort of works as my third hand here. So I can just very carefully take my snowflake here, the one with the two coming one direction, one going up and slide that over the snowflake, slide that on and down like that. And you just wanna push it down so you, it goes down far enough past the top there. I'm a little bit crooked here, there we go, okay. So that's on there and it, it dangles nicely. You can see it kind of will easily move back and forth. It dangles nicely, it's in the right spot. Then we're gonna put this other one on to that side too. So now you can see I've got three pieces, to, four pieces together, three sides here. Now I'll grab my last pieces that are here and these three, remember these have the three sides and those are gonna each line up with one of these slack sides here. So I'll just slide that down and there's no, I wish I had an easy way to say, oh, if you start in the middle and then work your way on the side, that's the easy way. You just sort of have to be very gentle with it. Um, I'm, and I'm not usually a gentle crafter. So it's, I, you really do have to be gentle with it treat it like tissue paper, if you will, so that it, um, so that it, go, it slides in nicely and you don't tear it. Cause that would just, you don't want to tear it at this point after all this work, just want it to go on nice and smooth. And it is pretty, like you can um, do the snowflake in different colors. So you might wanna do some of the snowflakes white, some of them blue. You could even do them in pinks, shades of pink. 
for baby announcement, a Christmas baby announcement, have a baby announcement or something. Okay, I need to step away from that side. <laughs> Let me turn it and see if I can do it better on this side. So we'll just take the middle one here first and get that one lined up and then work our way on the sides. So side one side, the middle, and then another side. And if you do these enough, you really will get um, a good system down on how to put them in. And you do have a little bit of forgiveness, but again, just be gentle, be patient with it. It will all kind of snap into place. So there's that. And I've got that side is all in place. And we'll put this side in next. <coughs> Coming back to this side here. So we want that one to go on the outside and, and go there. And then this one goes in the middle. And this one will go on this side here. Okay. So once you kind of get it in like that on the top, if you can really see it, when you sort of get it started in on the top and then you can carefully line it up and bring it down looking at each side as you go along to make sure you're lined up so that it will just snap into place for you. There we go, that one's in. Yep, and that one's in. So now I have all of my pieces in. You can see the great box effect on the top and we're ready for the next steps. So the next steps include adding the final base onto your card, onto your, like, so this can be an ornament. For this part, I'm going to use my um, this adhesive because it's it it's just a little bit bigger adhesive as opposed to using a liquid adhesive on the card stock. I like to do that. So I just put a nice bit in the center. I line up my fold line. So this this has already been folded. I already have fold lines here. So you're just going to line up your fold lines and your edges. So I kind of cheat this way and then fold it up and over. And if you need to, you can just move it a bit. But you do want to make sure that that fold line lines up because that's what's going to go in the middle of your card and line up with the fold on your card. So we've got our fold line there and then we'll take our deck or our front of our card here. You want to fold that in half. That has this along the scoring line. Let's see, there's my scoring line. So I'm gonna fold that in half like this. Now, what's important here to note is that you have this um, center snowflake. And so you don't wanna put adhesive on your insert that you the adhesive would show through or it would have sticky on it on that side. So to avoid that, what I do is I'll put adhesive on this side here in between these lines here like this. And then I'll put my adhesive on here around this line. And then when you turn this over and put it down, you just have to eyeball about a quarter of an inch around it and put it down like that. Now, if you did like I just did there and have a little adhesive in the way, an old trick is to use baby powder and put baby powder on that adhesive and that will remove the stick. So you can just take a little sprinkle of baby powder and put it on there and that will remove any too much adhesive if you've got it peeking through like I did. Now, we also wanna make sure that these little corner pieces here, our little slots kind of peek up a little bit. Hope I didn't glue those down. So you, because what's gonna happen is our tree is going to, our snowflake is going to slide under those like that. So let's do the other side, avoid making sure we don't get any adhesive underneath those slotted pieces. But this side, we don't have to worry about a snowflake being there. So we can just put that down. And I do like to put enough down because thinking that this um, ornament may be pulled in and out. So you do wanna have enough adhesive there to hold it down. Okay. So now again, I just use my weeding tool 
and I pop these up just a smidgey so that it's easier to tuck that underneath onto your card. All right, now while th that's sitting there, last step on our snowflake here, because like I said, you can use this as an ornament when you're done to hang on a tree. How beautiful is that? So what you wanna do is I have this um, DMC floss, it's a silver floss. And you can use anything though. You can use a, a piece of yarn, you can use, um, even dental floss if you had it. You can use any type of, of uh, decoration, decorative floss to just put, um, I hope fold it in half. I'm gonna do a slip knot. So I fold it in half and you thread it through this top. Um, it's kind of hard to see there. Let's see. See how it's got the top of the snowflake has that top circle. If you wanna make this an ornament, you can just slide that right through there and then you've got a loop on one side, two loose strings on the other side, and that pulls through like that. And then you can just do a little knot on the top. Like so. Okay, so we've got that knot like that. And then again, you can just trim your, your fiber there. And we slide it into the card underneath those little tabs. Now I did, I did frog ear those tabs quite at frog ear. I don't know if that's the right word. That looks like a frog's mouth to me. <laughs> so I think the angle I'm looking at it, they're, they're popped up a bit. So the reason I do that is you do sort of have to bend it to fit underneath both sides. So you get it, once you get it in one side, you kind of have to go to the other side and, and give it a little bend to get it underneath these little tabs. So it's easier before you try and insert it into there to have it, um, you know, kind of popped up a little bit. There we go. So we've got that lined up there. Then you just tuck the fold. And that looks so pretty from the top. You tuck the fold into it so that your fold line is tucked into the card there. And then as you squish it, as you close it, that's what happens. It closes up in there. And then when you want to give it and take it out, you just take it, take it out of the circle and you can give it to somebody. Now, I'm sure that there are a lot of questions. So Lindsay, is there, do you want to go, ask me anything? You know, Kesley, we have, I think everyone has kept up. I think, um, you know, the fact that this is going to be available on YouTube in, you know, a day or two, that everyone can go back at their own pace, but there are, we're good. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> um, I, let me just show one other thing here. Once we get our card up, um, just to show the envelope. And if you haven't used the scoring tool yet, if this is your first time using your scoring tool, um, when you scored, Kesley, you'll, yeah, quickly, I've had a couple of questions, um, about the, um, rectangle pieces on the base. Okay. Is there a way I know that like, we've already, is there a way that you could just show that quickly yeah. again? Yes, I will. Yep. Absolutely. Let me do the envelope and then I'll go back and I have this one Perfect. here I can do it on. And then a question about those darker blue flakes on the right. That was a simplified to just show us how to put it together. So yes. if you go back and watch, uh, that'll be taken care of. Yes, that was definitely a simplified version of this. So let me just pop this out. Okay, so the, I'm doing my last cut here. If anybody's working along with me, they'll be on their last one too. Okay, what I wanted to tell you though, if you've never used a scoring tool um, with your Cricut, you'll see a very fine line of scoring. And I never know like which way to fold. Do you fold towards the scoring line or away from the scoring line? And I've, I've come to the conclusion that you fold away from your fold, your scoring line there. That's how I get a better, the best fold. So I, I may be wrong on that, but I think as long as you're consistent, um, you're, you're fine. It doesn't necessarily matter like which way you go. It, it works the same either way. So my, my uh, 
method is just to be consistent with which way you go. So we're just gonna fold that up like that. And then we're doing the, um, just add, use your adhesive and put your adhesive here and then you'll have your cute little envelope all set up. Okay, so this one, um, I did this one in design space. And you know what, Lindsay? I don't think I did this one as a project, um, but if somebody wants to, if you follow me in design space, I will make this a project and set that up for you. Um, because it, it really helped me understand how the pieces went together when I did that. So on the bottom part here to do the base, what we're gonna do is you're gonna put these, these structures here. Um, like I said, I, I maybe, maybe I'm using this piece wrong. Maybe it goes like this. I don't know, maybe I'm using this piece wrong, but I couldn't, this piece didn't help me so much. Um, so you can, if you want to ignore that one, you can. These pieces here are going to be your base and it's going to create a, a bigger square around this, giving you four little squares in the middle. So what you need to do is take the first one and fold it along the score line you can see the score line there. So you fold it along the score line like this. Now you have, uh, you can see that you have different slits in it, depending on which way you look at it. So you have, sorry, this is my little slit there's not working. You have um, two slits in the bottom. So you can see it better. I have two slits in the bottom. Now those two slits that are on the bottom there, let's forget about everything else. Don't worry about this part or this part. These two slits here, these you want to fit on your legs, if you will, or the base of your snowflake. So you're going to put those on creating a square like this. You, you create like a little mini square in there. So I've got that one in there and that gives me one little mini square. Oops, did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. <laughs> Sorry, coming from the bottom here. Like this. And when you put that one on there, you line up the slots that are on the tree, the snowflake bottom part. I'm gonna take that off again. So you're gonna line up these slot pieces here with the slot pieces in the base of your snowflake. So we'll just put one in, come in from the, from the top here and go in, and then come in from the top here and go in. And if this is your first one and you have another person handy who could um, be an extra hand for you, I would grab them. <laughs> just your first one, after that you'll, you'll get it and it'll be easy. So we just put that one in there like that. Now maybe having that little piece will keep these a little bit steadier using this little H piece will keep these steadier. Now this part here, again, we're just gonna go, you just go down and bring that up. And then you wanna do the same thing on this last side here. Just bring it up like this. Now you'll notice though, that you still have these pieces here that need to come together. So this one goes into that, I don't know if, can you see that? This one come, kind of comes in and attaches with that one there. And then over on this side, this one attaches into that one there. So now if you look at the base of it, you have four little tiny, um, squares that you've made. And to put them in the circle then, go ahead and close it like this. So you close the whole thing up, press the tabs down towards the side like this. So you open those up like this. And then you have your little circle piece. Let's see, did I just cut? Oh, I just cut my circle piece here. So you have your little circle piece. This piece here with the little with the little slits in it. Can you see those slits? Oh, there we go. So the slits here, we want to put our tabs inside those slits. Do that nice little fold there. And then we're gonna put our 
tabs going inside the slits. So the first ones are really easy. You just stick them in along the fold like this. So that goes like to those, oops, wrong way. I said it was easy and then I made it look hard. <laughs> so those just slip in there like that. And you just use your um, adhesive, go ahead and, and glue that down. Little dot on each side. And then we'll just, and then you do the same thing on the other side here, you just bring these in onto this slit, pop them through and then hold them down with your adhesive. So it's easier if you like uncurl, unbend them like that so that you can stab it into that hole. All right, my glue didn't take. There you go, okay. So let me do this again. We got this guy like this. We're gonna poke it through the hole. I bet you're wishing you hadn't asked me to show this again. Poke it through the hole like that. So you've got these two little teeth on the on the front side. Use just a dabble do ya of the adhesive. And then while you're working on the other side, you can just hold those down. Make sure they go all the way through. So just hold those down. And then we'll come over here. Point those into that hole there. So the fun thing is to just keep in mind, it just takes patience. So if this is frustrating for you, take a deep breath, take a step, take a step aside and then come back at it. Um, we have a lot of smart people in the class and they're saying, I think the H piece makes it more stable. So it's easy to get those little teeth in. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. I'm regretting that having that piece on here. All right. So there we go. Now we've got that in there and also maybe having the other um, snowflakes, but it really, I think it's just, I'm, I'm manhandling it. There we go. Okay. So now I've got my other teeth in there and we are ready to go. And my first one slipped out. There we go. All right. Never, never skip a step. That's the lesson to be learned here. Cause we put the, um, we did put the little H on this one. So I think, I think you're right. I think that is a crucial piece to this going in smoothly. There we go. All right. So there we are. Now we have our pieces are all together. And then you just add your snowflake on your snowflake pieces on top, doing the one pointing down first, that one, and then this one. And then these three go like this. And if you, um, you know, for the first one, it really is for your first one, it was so much easier to do the con the one with the all the holes contoured out just to learn how to make it. And then once you learned how to once I learned how to make it, I could just I feel like I could just put these together all night long. Using my little H. There we go. So that's that's how we do it. What else did you, what else was the other question, Lindsay? Did you have another question? Well, another question that I saw was the um, intricate um, cutting selection, just how you get to that, a quick reminder. Oh, okay, yeah. The intricate cutting setting is in design space on your, um, on the material selection. You want to select the material intricate cut. And then also in your material selection, select um, 
remember material selection. So you don't have to go back to your software and change it each time. This way you can have your paper queued up to go. He's leaning a little bit, isn't he? You can have your paper queued up to go and then, um, and then just put it right in as you go along. Sorry, my little guy came out a little bit. Here we go. They're so pretty. And there's so many other ones in there. Um, the, the gift box for a birthday, all kinds of fun ones. Yeah, I know there's a, a tree, a gift box, a unicorn, a cupcake, a pineapple. There are so many pop-up cards. So once you make one, I feel like they'll be addicting and we'll be making them all the time. I think so too. I have not tried the unicorn one. That one I think is, is a really cute one though. Yeah, it's hard to show both sides of it, huh? There we go. I think so. I, I would decorate a whole tree almost just with these and not put them in a card. Or even just, you can put um, some air freshener on them and have it, you know, like, I, I don't know why it reminds me of those trees that hang from your windshield, but an upgrade to that, put a little air freshener on it and it'll just pop it right in your car. So cute. All right, any other questions I can answer? No, I think we're good. Everyone is just saying, thank you so much. These Yay. instructions were so helpful that they don't feel as intimidated. The, by by this card and it looks so beautiful and everyone's so excited to start making and yeah and for anyone that wants to follow kesley on design space i put a link to her profile you can also search her name in the members on the design space homepage. thank you so much i'm excited i want to see what you guys make so don't forget if you make um the card please share it with us cricket with michaels um there's two other hashtags i can't remember what they are but definitely share it with us we'd love to see it if you are having any problems you know reach out and we'll help you out so thank thanks you guys so much, so much.